Thank you for joining us this morning. We're so excited to do church with you. Thank you for inviting our house into your house. So it's so much fun. So we're excited for church this morning. Yes. And we, we just invite you to engage. Yes. Engage in church this morning, huh? Yes. Believe that, that the Spirit and the presence of God is still with you. I encourage even some of you to... To get up in the morning um, for future weeks of church and maybe get dressed for church like you normally would. Just to posture your heart in expectancy that, that there's a, a message for you. Mm -hmm. There's a word for you. There is an encounter mm -hmm. of God waiting for you. And so we just um, encourage you to fully engage in this moment, in this time of worship with the message. Just receive what God has for you today. Yes, we have a special treat this morning. Yes. Um, Cody Mosier is joining us to do worship. and. We were just so excited that we could invite some of our, our worship leaders throughout the seasons of, of Living Stones Church and uh, can join us and do this this way. So thank you, Cody, and enjoy the, today's service. God was buried beneath my shame. Carry that kind of way. It was my turn till I met you, and I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures, I tried. It was my turn till I met you. Cause you called my name and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. Call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day hey. Come on And now your mercy is saved My soul And now your freedom is all that I know yeah. The old man knew Jesus, what did I make you? Cause you called my name And I ran out of that crate Out of the dark glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Oh Come on church Heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now 
everybody doing? Hope you're enjoying this, uh, this quarantine life. Let's just take a minute to stand here and declare that, you know, no matter what we're up against right now, like that God is still on the throne, whatever this looks like. Jesus is right here in your home, and, and right now we just pray, Holy Spirit, that, that you would come and just occupy our homes. And as we travel through this, it, 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 what seems like such a dark time and something that we're just so not used to. God, that you would just that you would just embrace us and come and cover us, God. And just remind us day in and day out that Lord, you have us in the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name. Tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal joy I When brokenness and pain is all I know Well, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken It's my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, shame no longer has place to hide. No, I am not captive to the lies. Oh, I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. No, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. It's my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power I like can break off every chain. There's power I can empty out of the grave. There's resurrection power I can say. There's power in your name. Power in your name. There's power I can break off every chain. There's power I can empty There's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name There's power in your name Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear 
rising, stand a chance when I'm standing your love. Come on, do you believe that this morning, church? Come on, somebody stand up in your house this morning. Get up, give him praise. Jesus. Search the world, but it couldn't fail me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. When we sing, oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Come on, church. See, I'm not afraid. Yeah, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountains Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Come on. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Come on, do you believe that this morning? Lift his name up this high this morning. Cause you turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for our shame. And you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares You turn graves into gardens And you turn bones into armies And you turn seas into highways You're the only one who cares You're the only one who cares Nothing is 
is better than a year. Oh, there's not no. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, with all you have is so much joy. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, what's that? You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Shame into glory. You're the only. One who cares And you turn graves into garden And you turn bones into armies And you turn bones into highways You're the only one who cares You're the only one who cares You're the Lift him up this morning. Jesus. During all this time of confusion, Lord, we look to you as our source. With so much conflicting news and media out there, right now during this pandemic, Lord Jesus, we just look to you. You are our source. You are a lamp unto our feet. Jesus' name. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. Worthy of all the praise could ever bring if you oh. Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. We say, Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. And show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever Worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you. Oh, we live for you, oh Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Everyone knows Everyone Day and night, night 
ended in incense burns Day and night, night and day lit incense burns Day and night, night and day lit incense burns Day and night, night and day lit incense burns Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns oh, Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense burns Day and night Night and day let incense arise Day and night, night and day let incense arise Day and night, night and day let incense arise Sweet incense to you, Lord. Day and night, night and day, let incense burn. Day and night, night and day, let incense burn. Well, that was a little different. The church, we love you just the same. Jesus loves you. He's still on the throne. Lord Jesus, we lift you up in this time. We pray for healing, that you would heal and restore our land. And Lord Jesus, we pray over all sickness, all disease. And we just pray for your grace, your goodness, and your mercy upon us, Lord, in this time. In Jesus' name, amen, church. So I guess this is uh, the next best thing to, to being in person with you guys. But thank you so much for this experience. And next up is Pastor Justin. You have a next Hello, one. Living Stones Church. We'd like to give a big shout out to our amazing worship team for ushering us into the presence of the Lord this morning. We welcome you to Living Stones Church today. If today is your first time, we are so excited that you have chosen to join us. And for everyone else, a big welcome back. My name is Greg. And I'm Layla. And we'd like to continue our worship with our tithes and offerings. Now you can give online at livingstones.tv. We also have links on today's Bible app event or the Church Center app. So I'm going to be reading 2 Corinthians 9-7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God does love a cheerful giver. You know, I really like that verse because it reminds us that God has put joy in our hearts. And as we give, we should be doing that out, back out of joy. And so uh, I would encourage you to not give out of uh, requirement or obligation, but just out of the joy that the Lord's put into you, wanting to just give back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, honey, is it time to pray yet? Sure. Okay, let's do that. Let's pray now over the tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for giving us this day. We thank you, Father, for the tithes and offerings that are about to come into your house. Lord, we pray blessing over these uh, givings and offerings. We pray blessing over the givers. And we ask, Lord, that you would do your work with this, that you would reach your church, touch your church, help your church. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. 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 All right. 
So we have some announcements. Yeah. Uh, we're on the Bible app. Uh, so go ahead and search that and download it. I look under events. We're also having an interactive church experience. So if you go to livingstones.tv, scroll down halfway, there's going to be a button that says interactive church. Go there. There's people waiting to encourage you, to pray with you, to just say hi. Hi. Easter social distance parade. You heard us right. We're having a parade. Yay. Yay. So what we're going to be doing is super fun. We're going to be meeting up after Easter church service at the church building where we used to meet. And we're going to be decorating our cars for Easter. We're going to be making it look like an egg. We're going to be decorating motorcycle helmets and all those fun things. Um, and then we're going to be driving through the neighborhoods and spreading the love of God and for Easter. So, so text your name and the word Easter to 951-290-7117. One more time, that's 951-290-7117. Hey, if you're new with us, we would love to get to know you. So go onto our website, livingstones.tv, and there's a connection card. Click on that, fill it out, and we'll send you some goodies in the mail. Okay, missions trips. We have two trips coming up. That is One Day LA and Belize. Details to come. So, wow, parents, it's been a whirlwind these past few weeks, right? So on our website, we have a link for parents. Parent resources, there's children's um, messages, there are parent resources, there's so many things available to help during this time of, and take advantage of the family time together. Important, important, let's stay connected, connected but to not like each this, other. Six feet well, okay, six feet, but let's stay connected. How do we do that? Well, we have virtual groups, uh, so go online and sign up. Now, what kind of groups do we have? We have uh, men's and ladies' studies. Uh, we have men's uh, and women's prayer. We have connect groups. We're part of the Tharp Connect group. And, you know, Layla and I have really uh, been blessed with some very close friends through our connect groups. Uh, this is a place where it's safe to be yourself. Uh, you can just share openly, receive encouragement from uh, other like-minded believers. And so it is awesome. All right, guys, get connected today. Ah, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited you're joining us for church this morning. It's going to be such an awesome day. Um, excited to do this together. It's amazing. If you could go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Zechariah 4, verse 7. That's where we're going to start today. And this is our final week of the small stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, I can't believe it. Honestly, we had planned this series back in January, and uh, it just happened to start on the exact day, the first week that we had to do church online um, only. And then also, here we are four weeks later, um, four weeks into it, and I'm so excited. But this is our last last segment of, of the small stuff, and, and then we start a new series. Here's our new series is Rise Up, Rise Up. And I can't wait to start the series next week, and you know what next week is? That's right, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. So excited, it's going to be awesome. Um, we are excited because we I know we can't do church as usual, and we're all going to miss that. We're all going to miss all the goodies and the fun and the egg hunts and all those things. But you know what? We plan something fun anyways. So if you are here locally and want to be a part of it, um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up doing a uh, a parade. So um, we're all going to meet over at Dorothy McElhaney Middle School on Easter Sunday at 1 o'clock. And then uh, we'll be leaving by 2 o'clock. We want to leave as early as possible, but give people a little bit of time to get there. Um, but we're going to dress up our car. It'll look like a, a, a Easter bunny type thing. And um, we've invited some motorcyclists and other people to come so that we can go through the neighborhoods of French Valley and just tell them that Jesus is risen and that they are loved. And it's going to be so much fun to do that together. So I hope you can be a part of that. If you'd like to be a part of that, that text us. I'll put the number here at this on the bottom of the screen. Is it 951 290-7117. Text us your name and the word Easter, and we'll make sure and get you the information, um, get you involved in any communications that are needed for that over this next week. Um, but we won't be allowed to get out of our cars because we have to keep social distancing. 
Um, so but when we get there, we'll all get into our cars, dress up your car to look like an Easter egg, or if you're riding a motorcycle, dress up your helmet to look like an Easter egg, put some signs or, or decorate your car, make it make it fun. And it's going to be so awesome just to love on our community, go in and let them know that Jesus is risen, that he's still alive, he's still well, and that they are loved. It's going to be so much fun. So I hope you can join us for that. And also for that new Rise Up series starting next week also. Um, now, in preparation for this message, now my message is titled Mountains to molehills. Go ahead and say that out loud. Mountains to molehills. Mountains to molehills. I'm excited because we're going to get to go through this message together. But in my preparation for this message, I, I read an article on Psychology Today titled, How to Make a Mountain out of a molehill. Now, the, the interesting part about this, this article, of course, you know, you think, oh, you think of church and you're thinking you're reading psychology articles. Okay, that's interesting. But I, as I was reading this article, it really felt like it fit maybe for a lot of us during this season um, where, you know, maybe if some one little thing that happened and we turned it into something so much bigger, right? You think about like when you're walking by and somebody didn't say hello. And you're going, oh, what in the world? And you, you start to kind of think like, maybe they don't like me. Maybe they hate me. Maybe maybe we're not even friends, right? And, and the truth was they were just in a hurry and had to get to us another place really quick. Or maybe you're driving and, and somebody cuts you off, right? And you're thinking, man, has the whole world come to this? Is this the way it's going to be from now on? People are acting like this. Oh, my gosh. Isn't anyone considerate? Right? We kind of blow up this one thing where maybe they weren't paying attention and they just turned real quick or moved over and. And it wasn't that big of a deal. But is everybody in Zechariah? Zechariah 4 7? Or I'm going to be reading from the, the classic amplified version this time. Um, and it's in verse 7 it says, For who are you, O great mountain of human obstacles? Hmm. <laughs> that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds like some of the things we're going through right now. Great mountain of human obstacles. Before Zerubbabel, who with Joshua had led the return of the exiles from Babylon and was undertaking the rebuilding of the temple before him, you shall become a plain, a mere molehill. Can somebody say molehill? Molehill. And he shall bring forth the finishing gable stone of the new temple with loud shoutings of the people crying, grace, grace to it. You know what? I think about like that. You know, we, we've turned molehills into mountains. And as human beings, we, we tend to do things like that, right? We start to make small things big. We make the small stuff to be big stuff. And you know what? I think that God, especially as we read this scripture, God does the opposite, right? He He changes the polarity, right? He changes the way those things are completely. He, he'll, he'll make small things bigger than they should be, right? We make small things bigger than they should be, but then God, God comes in and makes big things smaller than they really are. Here's the main point of the message this morning. If you're writing down notes or if you're following along in the Bible app, you know what? If you're following along in the Bible app, here, here's, here's how you find us in the Bible app if you haven't found us already. It's so easy to follow along in there. It goes verse by verse and the different versions that if we're using different versions to iterate, all of that's right there along with our announcements. And so here's how you find us on the Bible app. Make sure you, you, you utilize that tool. It's such a fun and awesome tool. It has all the links for everything that we're talking about during the service. Um, but here's the main point this morning if you're taking notes. I trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. I trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. You know, this week we were praying for people and, and we invite you to, to come on with us when we're praying. But every Wednesday at noon, uh, we get on a Facebook Live and we pray for people live. So if people have prayer requests and need prayer for something, healing, whatever it is, um, we're going to be right there on Facebook Live, especially all, the, all through this COVID-19 thing and being there for each and every person. So get people online, have, join us with that. But this week when we were praying for people, I was looking out my, my dining room window and I saw this little bird. And this little bird was in my backyard eating in, in the grass, right? Eating in the, in the yard. And I had that thought of what, what God said to us, like, aren't you more important than these birds, than these flowers, right? Matthew 6, 32 says, for the pagans run after these things. Are some of us kind of dealing with some of the regular everyday things we're missing out on? Right? Thinking like, oh, 
Like you, you walk down the aisle of the grocery store and the shelf is empty. Like, I don't know how many people you've gone to multiple stores looking for, for TP and can't find it anywhere, right? And it's these mere needs. And, and here in, in verse 32, it says, For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. You know what? God knows what your needs are. Can I tell you something funny? Oh my goodness. This last couple of weeks, right? Um, we, we've had a couple of families, a couple of people um, drop off some white gold <laughs> at our house, right? And, and with a little note or a little text that said, hey, I just want to let you know, I, I left my tithe on your front doorstep and I go out there and there's a few rolls of toilet paper. Now, as funny as that is, they're, they just happen to come at, at very opportune times. Another time, uh, uh, somebody was driving by my house while I was doing some yard work, and, and she said, do you need anything? And I said, actually, we're down to the last roll of toilet paper per restroom in our house. And man, we could use some toilet paper. you need anything? She's like, no, but I have some toilet paper, right? <laughs> and so all of a sudden, we end up getting some TP right at the right times when we needed it. Man, it's so funny, but those are the needs that we have, right? And those are the needs that all of us have. And, and I, I pray that we can meet each other's needs and that God will help meet our needs in the same way. But it's all in that key of, I will trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. Can we say that again together? I want to make sure that this just sinks in. I trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. You know, my seven-year-old, he, he has his own mountains he's dealing with right now. And those mountains are, are called chores. Right? We're trying to teach him that contributions to the family and to the household are important. And so we give him small chores. Right, One of those small chores is sorting the recycling. Right, Putting the cans in one bag and putting the bottles in another bag. And I can't tell you, he will sit and he will go, it's too hard. It's too big. I can't do this. And my wife multiple times has, has tried to trade him for her contributions for his, right? She says, well, if you'll just fold all the family's laundry or if you'll just clean all the dishes, I'd be happy to sort the, the, uh, the recycling for you. But isn't it amazing how we all end up doing that at times? We make this little molehill, this little thing into a much bigger thing. You know, Psalms 97 verse five says, the mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. You know what? When we put our trust in God, he is faithful. Can you say to somebody, he is faithful? Kids, say to your parents, he is faithful. Husbands, say to your wives, he is faithful. Wives to your husbands, he is faithful. Our God is faithful. And you know what? When I think about these mountains that melt like wax before our God, what are those mountains? You know what? Some of those mountains are fear. Fear is staring us in the face like a mountain, is it not? Right? It's looking at you right now going, you know what? I'm too big. You can't get past me, right? There's some fearful things going on in our country right now, amen? Staring at us. But you know what? When we set our eyes upon the Lord, those mountains melt like wax into little molehills. Something that's not so difficult to get over. Something not so difficult to get through. Fear. Maybe it's shame. You know what? Maybe maybe you were hiding, hiding from trying to dealing with this shame or this guilt that you have in your life. And now that you can't go to work and, and you're stuck at home, now you're facing that shame or that guilt right here. Can I tell you something? When you put your trust in God, all of a sudden the, that shame melts like wax. That mountain melts like wax before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Can I tell you something? Bitterness, doubt. Those things can melt like wax right in front of our God. When we put our trust in God, those things melt like wax. That mountain melts down like wax. Can I tell you something? I know it. COVID-19 is staring us all in the face. Even today, I've gotten text messages from friends and family members who have lost friends and family members or who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. And that thing is staring us right in the face. It's a mountain right in front of us going, is this going to overcome me? Can I get past this? Can I tell you something? Our God is good and he will get you past this. Now, I'm not discounting your loss. If you lost a loved one to COVID-19, we, we are praying for you and we're praying for God's comfort to come over you. But I got to tell you, listen, this is not 
something that should overtake us. This mountain will fall like wax when we put our trust in God. You know what? That mountain of disease, that mountain of death, they all, somebody say all, they all melt, melt like wax before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They all melt like wax. In Luke 8, verse 49, it says, While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Can you, tell, can you tell that person in your house right now, the, the congregant that's sitting on the pew next to you or the lazy boy next to you or the couch next to you or on the floor next to you watching this message? Can you tell them, don't be afraid? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Can we do this together? Just believe and she will be healed. Come on, some of you are praying for some healing right now and needing some healing in your life, needing some healing from COVID-19. Verse 51 says, When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Verse 52. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. Come on, have, have we not experienced this over the last couple of weeks? I know I've been telling my kids, stop wailing, right? So, you know what? It is tough. It, these things are hard, but stop wailing. It's not helping anything. Stop wailing. Jesus said, she is not dead, but asleep. Verse 53, they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, my child, get up. Come on, listen, tell your neighbor right now, get up, right? This is why I'm excited for this new series, Rise Up, starting next week. Get up, rise up. It's time to rise to the occasion. God is still alive. He's still good. Listen, I know there's some been some things. I know it's been difficult these last couple of weeks. Can I tell you something? That maybe, maybe this COVID-19 has come into your life and taken over and sat in the throne and said, you know what? I'm here to control your life from now on. Can I tell you something? But when you invite Jesus back into your life, when you invite him back into your situation, when you invite him back into your boat, he walks in and he takes authority. And he says to COVID-19, you do not belong in my chair. This is my child in whom I love and whom I'm well pleased. And he sits down and he gives you that authority right back. Does anybody need some authority given back to them in their life? Mm, it's amazing when we surrender to Jesus, how he gives us back authority. That main point, let's say that again, because I want to drive this home. I trust God. Somebody say, I trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. I trust God to turn my mountains into molehills. Listen, we're all in need of some peace in this storm. I know it's tough. I know it's been a tough run these last few weeks. And we need some peace in the middle of the storm. And my, my, my God is the Prince of Peace. He's the, he's the commander of all peace. He's the one that sends out peace to us, to each of us, so that we can make it through this season. Peace. Peace in the storm. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. Can you say peace? Just say it one more time. Doesn't it just feel so good to say that word? Peace. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. <laughs> Are we experiencing that right? We're experiencing that right now, aren't we? Trouble. It's a little bit challenging. But take heart. Come on. Somebody say it. Can you, kids, can you shout it? I want your parents to, I want your neighbors to hear it. Take heart. Ready? Do it again. Take heart. Come on. One more time. Take heart. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Listen, before the beginning of time, our God knew that these things would happen. He knew that this would happen. But at the same time, he's going to see us through. He's going to be there for us. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. Because we can take heart to know that our God is good. That he loves us. He has the best for us. And he has already overcome the world. He's already overcome. COVID-19. Amen.
Amen. Listen, I hope this message blessed your life. I hope that you've had your life changed this morning. But here's the thing. You know, a message is nice and it gets you motivated and it gets you thinking and it gets you going, you know what, maybe I can make it another day. Maybe I can make it through. But can I tell you something? Without a real relationship, a real relationship with Jesus, having Jesus to be the Lord over your life, you'll not experience any of this peace that I've been talking about. Listen, those, those molehills that we've turned into mountains, that God wants to take the mountains and turn them into molehills, we won't have that experience without Jesus. Listen, my best friend, my Savior, Jesus, he has never let me down. And if you're in, you know, listening to this message, I pray that if it's blessed you, share it. Share it with on social media. Share it with somebody. But listen, God is after you. He cares about you. And he wants to give you peace in the midst of this chaos. But you have to put your trust in him. And if this is your first time, I want to introduce you to my best friend so that you can receive that peace. It's really, really simple. Jesus died for us on the cross so that one day we can live with him for eternity. He took sin, all the things that you and me and all of us have done wrong. He took sin on him so that he could die for our sin and that we could walk in his righteousness, walk in his because he never sinned. We can trade places, right? Change the polarity. All of a sudden, we are good. We are righteous in him. Amen? So you want to pray something like this. Jesus, I give my life to you today. And I ask that you would come in and change, come into my heart and change my life from this day forward. Help me to be more like you. Help me to live my life in a way that is pleasing to you. Creator of all things, you made me for a specific purpose. Lord, help me to walk with you and show me what that purpose was. God, I trust you and I give you my life today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I'm so excited that you came and, and you watched this message today and you gave your life to Jesus because that is the first step to the rest of your life. And I believe that God is going to do a great and mighty work in and through it. So welcome to the family of God. If you gave your life to, to Jesus today, if you're on our interactive site, go ahead and press that button says that rate to raise your hand and say, I gave my life to Jesus. And we just want to pray with you and also send you a Bible. Make sure you get a Bible in your hands. And, and if, if you're, if you're on our, our, our live stream somewhere else, um, go ahead and comment on there or, or send us an email or send us a text at 951-290-7117. And the number's on the screen for you. And, and, and reach out to us and let us know that you made that commitment. Now listen, I know some of you are in need of some prayer. You've been going through some tough stuff, right? And I just want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for God's healing touch over your life. If you're in need, in need of healing, of physical healing in any way, I believe that God has it for you. But in, in my prayer time, I believe that there were some people really dealing with some depression recently. I mean, you're stuck in your house, you're isolated, you're dealing with some mental things like that. And, and so I just want to pray for your mental state. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So I'm going to pray for your sound, soundness of mind this morning. Father God, I pray, Lord, for, for minds to be put at ease. God, I pray for this season to be the most restful season that this nation and the world has ever experienced. God, that we can put our 100% of our trust in you and not, not be relying and waiting on the economy, not be relying and waiting on, on the government, not be relying and waiting on them, but God, to put our, our whole heart and our whole faith in you, that you will come through through all those things and so much more. God, we put our trust in you this morning, and we ask, God, that you'd give us in return soundness of mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. If you need healing for your body, if you need prayer for anything, listen, you can go on our interactive site and, and ask for prayer for something specific. We have some people online ready to pray for you. And I want you to know, too, that our prayer team, Living Stones Church prayer team, is praying for you right now. They are interceding on your behalf. And we have watched miracle after miracle after miracle happen over the last, over the last year, year and a half. It's been incredible to see what God can do. But I want to tell you right now that God is not short on miracles. <laughs> that you're not walking through the grocery aisle of heaven and the, the, the shelf is empty for miracles and you can't find any. 
I'm going to tell you right now that God has a miracle for you. He can bless you. He can he can touch your life. So if you're in need of prayer for anything, I'm feeling some stuff kind of in my right shoulder right now. But if you're in prayer for anything, if you're in need of prayer for anything, listen, have someone in the house with you or to, to lay hands on your body, to lay hands on your shoulder or wherever the pain might be. And we're just going to believe for God to bring healing to your body. Can we pray that together? Father God, Lord, you know our needs. You say that we don't need to worry about it, that the birds are taken care of, the flowers are taken care of. We don't need to worry about our needs. So God, you know our needs. You know what's happening in our body. So God, you say we have not because we ask not. So we are asking, God, that you would heal our physical body right now this morning. Lord, if people are dealing with dementia, God, I pray for a soundness of mind right now. God, if if people are dealing with with uh, an aneurysm that kind of took things and, and tweaked things, God, we are believing for stuff to put, be put back in order to be realigned, Lord Jesus. God, if somebody experienced an accident and their neck is still hurting, Lord, I just pray for for alignment in in that in that spine in that neck right now. God, that you put things back in order, Lord Jesus, that those little tweaks would be put back in order right now. They, they can even feel the pop right now and experience that healing, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If someone is on depression medication, God, I pray, Lord, that you would supply their needs and God, that you would put everything back in balance that needs to be in balance right now. Lord, that they'd experience that healing. God, that chemicals would be balanced back out. Lord, that there would just be a wholeness brought to that physical body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on. Our God is good. Hey, if you experience physical healing in, in any way, please reach out to us. Let us know what God did. We want to celebrate with you. And, and of course, if, if, if you think you're healed, but you don't know yet, make sure you check with your doctor. I want to, I want to, I want to know that it was a real healing and not just something in your head. But if God did something in you, please let us know. We're so excited. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you were blessed by this message and that you'll bless somebody else with it. We look forward to, to seeing you next week at Easter Sunday. And if you can join us for the, for the parade, that's going to be awesome. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be so incredible. So we love you. Have a great week. Stay connected. Get involved in the Connect Group this week. We love you and have a great week. What an incredible time of worship. And I hope that you experienced God right where you were. I hope he met you. I know he's faithful to do that. And we just want to encourage you, stay connected. We hope that you will text somebody, make a phone call, yeah. and um, join us on Wednesday for live prayer. We're mm -hmm. there um, every Wednesday from 12 to 1 o'clock, um, praying and believing with each of you. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to it. So stay connected. We love you so much. Yes. Don't forget to join us for Easter. Yes. Uh, text us at 951-290-7117. The number's at the bottom of the screen. Yes. Text us your name. And, and Easter, and we'll make sure you get all the info to be a part of that parade. It's going to be so much fun. We love you. Have an incredible week. We'll see you next time. God bless you.